Goodyear um, CEO Rich Kramer joins us now to discuss price pressures as well as their recent acquisition of Cooper Tire. We're going to talk a little about NASCAR as well. But um, look, most people know a tire is something that you can't keep on a 12-year-old car. You've got to change uh, tires, I think, at least every five years. And so if your competitors are starting to raise prices, Rich, are you going to be able to as well? Well, Matt, great to be with you, by the way. And uh, I can tell you, you know, the market that we're operating in right now very much sees a situation of demand being ahead of supply. That's for a lot of reasons. We also have increasing material costs coming in. So we have, uh, uh, we've certainly gone out into the market to recover the value of those, uh, uh, the value of those raw material increases in the market. So we have increased prices. There's a number of announced price increases that we put into the market already, reflective of many of the things that you just said. Want to talk post Cooper, if we could, Rich, uh, just in terms of what it brings to you, and then really importantly, some of the the kind of so-called synergies or cost savings that you see. How can you deliver on the kind of efficiencies of the combination? Well, for us, Amanda, it's a really a tremendous transaction for us. As uh, I think Matt said earlier, as we started, certainly this solidifies our position as number one in the U.S. It doubles our size in China. From a customer perspective, it really gives us an enhanced value proposition for them, extending their product portfolio from the Goodyear brand all the way down to Cooper, which is just more mid-tier. And in particular, we get an advanced lineup of light truck and SUV tires that Cooper brings with us. And again, as you know, that's probably the fastest growing segments in the auto industry right now. In addition to that, we get really an improved financial position. We grow, our credit metrics get better. We generate more cash flow that lets us invest back into some of the new mobility issues around Sightline, which I suspect we'll talk about. And for us, we've got a great fit in terms of our cultures, and that's so important to get the integration savings that we see coming from this, the $165 million from an operating standpoint and significant working capital benefits as well. So we feel really confident about our ability to integrate Cooper. It's very exciting for us. Let's talk. Let, let's talk about Sightline for a second. What are smart tires? So, you know, Matt, uh, Sightline is really our entry into intelligent tires, which I believe is where the market is going. You know, if I take a step back, Matt, Goodyear is known for innovative industry-leading tires. We're a 123-year-old company. Tires and services is what we do and what we do well. But we got a third pillar, and that's really how to define where Goodyear plays in this new mobility ecosystem. And intelligent tires is really defining how we're going to, uh, to do that. And intelligent tires essentially is we have a sensor in a tire that is really linked to a, a small uh, onboard device that plugs into the OBD port of the car. We send that information up to a cloud. And from there, we put our history, our 120-year history of tire of performance, tire wear data. We link that up with machine learning and different AI algorithms, and we can actually provide proactive predictions of tire performance. Matt, in a pilot, we were able to predict, not predict excuse me, 90% of tire issues before they happen. That's what intelligent tires are really getting us into. Well, how much of that do you actually get from the racetrack? I'm also always fascinated about technology that comes from racing and eventually hits dealership floors or the road or however you want to say it. Obviously, the tire is one of the most important components, and you're the sponsor for NASCAR's, all NASCAR's national series. Um, and it's so key to the driver to know where the heat is, how, the, how worn the tire is, how much grip he's got left or she's got left. How much of that do you pull in from NASCAR? A, a tremendous uh, amount, Matt, because really, you know, the tire is the four patches that hit the road. That's true for a consumer. To your point, it's even more true for a driver on a racetrack. So the understanding what happens on those four patches on the road really are at the essence of giving us all that history around tire performance, tire wear that goes into not only the engineering of the tires, but also as we look forward, being able to predict how those tires will perform. I want to ask you about some of the issues that we talk a lot about lately, Rich. It must be on your mind, and that is the input costs, commodity prices through the roof, uh, supply chain issues affected by the pandemic. Jay Powell and company say these are all transitory. What are you seeing by way of pricing and costs and what you might have to actually build into your forecasts? 
Well, I, I, Amanda, it's a great question because I think that you and many of your listeners have heard certainly access to raw materials, uh, even access to labor continue to be pressures that we see. I'm very happy to say that uh, our team, my team has been very proactive in terms of procuring and securing the materials we need to keep our factories running. We've done that, we've done that very successfully. And clearly while, while labor uh, is an issue for us here, particularly in the United States, uh, we've been managing through that, uh, through things like overtime, as well as significant hiring programs that we have out there to bring new people into mm -hmm. our markets. But clearly there is, is higher costs and you're, you're absolutely right. Second half will have higher input costs than the first half. But as Matt started, uh, we're certainly going out to recover from the, uh, recover that in the marketplace as well to recover those input costs. Given the environment we're in, where we see a market where demand is ahead of supply, Amanda, we expect that to continue. And remember, the OEs really aren't demanding all the tires they need right now because of the chip shortage. So we see this dynamic of, of, uh, of demand and supply to be with us for a while, particularly as the OEs come back to market. And, and we do think they will. Rich, your uh, stock has definitely recovered from the pandemic, going from less than five to more than 20. Um, but you're still a long way from the highs we saw in 2017, 2018. You're up around 35 bucks a share. What does Goodyear need to do to get back to those kind of levels? Well, you know, Matt, I think the trajectory that we're on, uh, being in an up cycle, and as you know, we are a cyclical industry, and that, that cyclicality certainly gets reflected in our share price. But we're on an up cycle. We're able to recover those, the value for our products. Putting innovation in the marketplace and getting paid for that is something that we do and will continue to do with our intelligent tires going forward. We're really excited about that. And I have to tell you, as we look at our business today, we have large shares in the aviation market and certainly in the off-highway market. Those markets are yet to recover. Airline clearly is, uh, is on the right path. You saw, I think we had 2 million TSA passengers. But that business globally, particularly international travel, hasn't come back yet. And the mining industry as well hasn't been back. So as we bring that back to the market, I think you'll see that we'll have the tailwinds of, of getting us back to more historical performance. We know uh, one of the big changes coming, of course, will be the shift to uh, electric vehicles. All the big OEMs are going that way. Uh, will you be agnostic on that? And where are you in kind of the sustainability front? Does it, I mean, your tires are obviously pretty carbon heavy. What does the future look like for rubber? So uh, I, I will tell you, Amanda, from a sustainability perspective, we're really pretty excited. So we've put uh, soybean oil and rice husk ash in our tires to replace petrochemicals. We've increased those percentages since 2017, let's say on average by over 40%. Uh, we've set a target to have a, a, a tire developed from fully sustainable materials by around 2030. And we feel very confident that we'll be able to do that. And in addition to that, we have made significant progress in rolling resistance, which means a vehicle in terms of fuel needs less fuel, which means less emissions, or in an EV makes a charge last longer both of which are better from an emission standpoint. And I have to say, you know, Amanda, the best thing all of us can do, and, and we say for our products, is keep tires inflated, which is what Sightline helps uh, particularly fleets do. Uh, by keeping tires inflated, we'll use a tremendous amount of less fuel, which will also contribute to the emissions uh, 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 question that you raised. 